Hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm still scrambling to get things done. I could see you. They couldn't see you, but I could see you running in the in the little uh, in the little. Uh, because I see the box the eight, you know. <laughs> it's numbered. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> hello, everyone. So today, Amber unfortunately cannot join us, but she's with us in spirit. She said and she was going to be watching. Maybe she was going to be watching. So let's just run through, say some hellos. Hello, Karina. I doubt your name is Adventure 070, but hello. <laughs> hello, Byron, Carmen. Oh, where was you, Carmen? Collier Confection, Cynthia. Where is it? I had it here, Cynthia. Candice. Oh, the, the stream is moving as I'm trying to go. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, June. And yes, there, where is she going to show up here? No, no, wrong one. There she is. Hello, Amber. <laughs> Mary Jean, Leah, and Gigi, Lynn, Stephanie, Ursula. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So today, our plan. Do you want to explain, Han? Hello, I just made many of your cookies. That's awesome. Hello, everyone. So today we're going to um, do cookies that you guys can share with, like, cookie gifts. And I think oh. we both got, what? Oh. Cookie gifts? No, gifts I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> it's not gifts that you want for yourself to make cookies. <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, I, for Christmas, I always give, um, uh, I would always give our friends and family cookies, but not necessarily cookies to eat. I would give them cookies to display in their house, you know, something like a little scene, maybe an ornament or a little gingerbread house or things like that. So um, yeah. we're kind of going with, with, with that theme that... Um, uh, you got especially now like it's it's really it's so timely like we can't really spend time with with each other but if you send someone little maybe a christmas ornament they can hang it on a tree so you'll be kind of like with the spirit with them yeah kelly's exactly. eating pizza and popcorn yes i could use a slice of pizza right now i could well yeah i could use a little pizza hello 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 so yeah so that's what we will be doing today um uh, we also wanted to say thank you for all of those who are still contributing uh, and sending us stars on Facebook and also all of you on YouTube are sending us um, contributions via Super Chat. It's really, really appreciated. I have some exciting news. Our kit is sold out. Oh, really? So absolutely, yes, it's sold out as of yesterday. So that's fantastic. Thank you, everyone who purchased the kit. Here, let me just post. So thank you. This is uh, uh, Angie and Judy. Thank you for your contributions. Much appreciated. And if we could ask you to please, um, we started a new Facebook page called Dessert Network. So if you could go follow Dessert Network, that's where the three of us are collaborating, where we're posting our like group stuff. And we need to get 10,000 followers to turn that into more like of a business page. So we need your help, please. Yes. Well, thank you. And if you didn't know, we're on, on Fridays as well at the same time. And if you're not following us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest, I also have a blog. Marlin has a lot of um, um, lot of <laughs> a lot of tutorials <laughs> on her <laughs> 12 years worth. Uh, that's a lot uh, on her Facebook page. Not a lot. In that's just Christmas if you want. <laughs> yeah. I'm on dessert now. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, do you want to go first, or should I go first, or what? Uh, what are we Just quickly, though. So, Amber had prepared for today. She she um, prepared this box. So, if you guys want to learn more about this project, you'll find um, all that on her blog. And I think yeah. she added. Do we have it here? Hold on. I think she. 
here's her blog. So you can go and check it out and she'll, uh, she has all that tutorial there for you to, um, if you'd like to learn more about that. And yeah, you can go first time. Okay, so today I prepared for you, I'm going to show you a little, um, oh, I, uh, I'm i not gonna show you because I forgot to, to edit that part, but I do have a little part that I I'm gonna show you and then we'll go, we'll go to decorating. Let me just put that on a screen here. So I actually prepared my gingerbread dough for centerpieces that I really like. Uh, it's posted on the blog. Somebody recently told me that um, they are having issues with that recipe because it's too crumbly. So I made it again just to be sure it's not. I actually think it's a little too wet. So I think I'm gonna actually scale, maybe scale down some of the wet ingredients. Um, you can half the recipe because the recipe asks for seven cups of flour, which I, I kind of gather it's a lot. But if you are making a lot of uh, gingerbread houses or a tall gingerbread house or something like that, it will be really nice to have a lot of dough all at once so you don't have to keep making it. And it's a recipe called construction gingerbread dough. So you can find it on the blog. And that is the same recipe I used to make um, my um, ornaments. I purchased the ornament cookie cutters from uh, Home Goods last year and they are rather large you can see here i cut out the middle and then i uh, let them cool and today i'm going to be using sheet gelatin this is something new for me so what i did i trimmed the gelatin to the size of the window that i need or you will need now keep in mind the sheets they come in only in certain sizes so if you were to make these um windows uh, bigger, you won't be able to use a gelatin. So make sure that you have a gelatin sheet that can um, be used. It should be larger than your opening. And I ended up, uh, I had to experiment a little bit because it wasn't working at first, but I think I figured it out. So what I did, I, um, I piped a layer of buttercream, butter well, icing just on the edge here. And this is like a piping consistency. And I'm going to immediately glue it over the window and try to get it as flush um, as possible with the surface of the cookie. So you're just gonna turn it over and place it and very gently go around the edge to push the icing so it sticks and then I'm going to also actually turn it over to make sure that it's flush everywhere and we're going to decorate it right away because before I would wait for it to dry but because gelatin is not porous it's almost like uh, acetate sheet so it would literally fall off the cookie so that wasn't ideal or it would uh, start like lifting up the icing once I piped it on so when you don't wait for it to dry by the time it's dry and it wants to get off the cookie the icing that you piped on it will keep it in place if that makes sense now these wouldn't be ideal for eating because you can't really bite through the gelatin so if you were to give these to someone to eat i would tell them to um, you know remove the gelatin before they eat the cookie and then i proceeded with icing it with uh, 15 second consistency royal icing And I was going yesterday, I was looking online, like, uh, you know, uh, we have certain colors of the year. So I, I looked and apparently this year it's uh, navy blue, gold and champagne pink or something. So this is supposed to be navy blue, navy blue champagne pink. And then I will have some gold the details um, live when, we, when I will be decorating for you guys. So I just wanted to show you this step because this has to dry before I do anything else and i have that cookie ready here who picks the color of the year i don't know i have no idea but i thought this was so cool like i was so pleased you know I, we were talking today and it wasn't working because the gelatin was lifting off um but now i was able to figure it out and I'm, i'll just show you okay. very nice 
So you have two layers of gelatin so there. Yes. So I actually have two. So it's one cookie, but um, I have two layers of gelatin. And because gelatin is so, so thin, you you know, one cookie, this is a quarter inch. And I actually have some that are thinner. And it you can still put some sprinkles inside. And I'm going to actually hang these. I think right. it's less intimidating to use than isomalt. Some people are a little, you know, isomalt, you have to get it so hot for to liquid, you know. It can be maybe a little scary. This is something you could do with the kids, whereas yes, I wouldn't bring it. But, but like make this. sure that you, I like, yeah, you have to make sure that you ice it, or, I mean, you press the gelatin sheet so it's flush with the cookie, and then decorate right away. I find that worked the best because, um, Maybe there is one cookie that has a, oh, here. If you see this, this little one, this, I don't know if you can see, I'll show you. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move over to my decorating station, so I'll see yeah, you. with your camera. So what is it, oh, what is it that you see? Uh, I don't know. It's good, it's good. So, oh, I need to put this up a little bit. So what's on the surface there? It looks like it's kind of sparkly. Did you put sanding sugar or something? Well, that was a, a rookie mistake, I have to say, <laughs> because I um, I iced it, right, with the navy blue, and then I put it under the fan, and it looked all great. I'm like, oh, I can move on, you know, have this ready. So I piped the outline. I, know, I don't know if you can see, but the outline is like, oops, got icing on here sticking. So I put outline here. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna dip it in sanding sugar and it will look really nice. So, I mean, dip it, I, I sprinkled sanding sugar on it and it just stuck all over because it wasn't completely, completely dry. But I have to say, I do love it, you know? So this is just sanding sugar. And then I put uh, three different numbers inside. Mm -hmm. Gelatin sheets, uh, the idea came from the gingerbread houses because oftentimes instead of uh, melted uh, sugar or isomalt, you can also use gelatin sheets on your house, on the windows. So that's really nice. This side is not decorated yet, but you can see I wanted to show you on this one. You can see here. So you see this little bump? So that's actually the gelatin sheet because on this one, like this is the one of the first ones I did. Um, I waited about 15, 20 minutes before I started piping my uh, my for my top layer. And by that time, the icing between gelatin and the cookie started to dry out. And I guess there wasn't enough addition in this section. So as the, as the icing was um, sitting, the gelatin sheet was, you know, it was moving up. Mm -hmm. so I find that like doing it right away, it does help quite a bit. And so this is the cookie that I showed you in a video. So the next step would be uh, we're going to. Oh, should I decorate? Okay, I don't know. Should I decorate the outside, or do you want me to show you how to fill it and glue it, and then I will decorate another one, I guess. Well, I guess show that. That's the whole point, right? right. So so you can uh, decorate this any way you want, but I'm going to turn it over. And I have here two sets of gelatin sheets. So you so, got that, I'm guessing, in Spain by the writing on it. Yes, well, this is Dr. Edgar, but you can, um, you know, I mean, they're, they usually come, I think this is a standard size. Mm -hmm. um, these ones. I picked up yesterday and these are um i have to say they are a bit thinner these were 99 euro 99 cents uh, so that's really cheap but you look they are just a bit shorter so you have to so i'm gonna use these ones for for the stars i made or the snowflakes for this large opening i have to use this one a, a question uh, came in han and we discussed it yesterday i don't know if you experimented did you try painting them the gelatin I, I uh what i did i uh, i had some uh, like airbrush color so i used just the paintbrush and and um it dried on uh -huh. like, it was like a, almost like a uh, i think you could create like a watercolor effect on it but i would definitely experiment with it because in, as we know as as the water sits on it 
it will probably start warping. Okay. So maybe maybe uh, painting them with like alcohol-based mixture mm -hmm. would, be, would be a good uh, idea just to experiment. But like I said, first experiment. Don't don't try your whole project and then it will be ruined. So yeah. what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first trim it um, here. And you just need scissors. I mean, this is I love this. Yeah, it's very uh, crafty. It's not very cake. It looks more crafty. Sherry's asking if uh, these can be found in the United States. Oh yeah, the the she gelatin is available. It's not available, I find, in a grocery store as it is here. But I bought she gelatin um, online um, on, Amazon. on Amazon. Like if you are doing a project like this, when you do, you know you probably are not gonna eat it. I wouldn't buy like a platinum gelatin, which is expensive. I would buy the cheap, um, uh, cheap uh, gelatin. You know, like um, the, the degree. I think the degree um, uh, tells you. I think the cl the clearness, the clearness of the the gelatin. Like the higher the number, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I don't know a lot of things about gelatin. Um, uh, I think the higher the number, the clearer the gelatin it is, and then there is no um, like taste to it, so mm. it's tasteless. Because a lot of times gelatin, it's basically you know it's either you either get beef gelatin or pork gelatin, mm -hmm. so sometimes there can be some you know odd taste. But uh, yeah, you can definitely find these online. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> it's yeah, me. So, it's so, asking. so I'm going to now trim the corners because. That seems to be a, a culprit here at the corner. So I'm going to kind of make them make them round a little bit. Oh, and saying that the grade is also for the like firmness of the gelatin. You know, like sometimes you need like a firmer gelatin, depending yeah, yeah. on the cake or the project. I have never worked with sheet gelatin until I came here. And uh, it was so much easier to work with. I have to say, I was scared to use it, but I used it a couple of weeks ago and I was scared, but it was so, it was very easy to use. Like it dissolved better or something. Like, you know, granulated gelatin, it, you, we tend to have issue like, well, maybe it's not dissolved completely. So now I'm going to just use uh, piping consistency royal icing and I'm going to pipe it just on the edge. And now I know we talked about this with Marlon earlier. I'm really, uh, you know, crazy about aligning, <laughs> aligning these. But she said not to worry, worry about it. That I'm like overthinking it. So if you really have to align them, you know, you can do it obviously before. Here, I'm going to tell you though, Han. Okay, if you align it, if you look dead set like from the top and you align it perfect but as soon as you're looking at it from slightly the side then it's not aligned so it doesn't matter do you understand what i'm saying like if you align from the top it's not aligned from when you're looking at the side oh yes. are you visualizing what i'm saying yes yes ma'am <laughs> sabrina's asking if you could make these sheets yourself i have tried and I actually, um, I have tried like I have I actually dissolved gelatin. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Dry. Um, they they uh, didn't dry as nice because they were they were barb or something like they were not flat. Yeah, they're, these are when you you get commercial manufacturing of products, it's just more polished looking, right? I did see, and it's on my list to do. I did see a tutorial on how to make gelatin um, gelatin sale. Oh, okay, yeah. I need to make more, um, but um, because like a cake sale, you know. Yeah, yeah. Cake sale, it's not flat, so it was really cool looking because it was actually like um, shaped, mm -hmm. shaped almost. But, but, but I had, I had success with drying it home, you know. Yeah, but you said it was very affordable. So there's, right? Like oh, it's um, well, I paid uh, ninety nine uh, cents, which is maybe a dollar. I don't know, dollar thirty, dollar twenty for twelve sheets of gelatin. Yeah, so not worth it. I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm gonna press on it. Obviously, this has to be dry in order for you to be able to press on it. Okay. 
And you see, like there is some icing that oozed out here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to ice it right away. So I have my, um, I mean, oh, I don't know. Oh, I forgot. Jennifer's mentioning you forgot to add your sprinkles. Oh gosh, oh yes, thank you. <laughs> this happened to me before. <laughs> He's paying attention. The fun part, okay. So, <laughs> so should I do the Christmas ones or? Well, the thing about the Christmas ones is they're very easy to see. I find they stand out a lot more. They're yeah, more. Um, the whole. Yeah. Thank those you for telling me about that. About that, I would have totally forgot to add the sprinkles. I'm such a. Okay, thank so, you, Jennifer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I guess, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to just add a few more lines here, just so it sticks. Hopefully I didn't mess it up already. Okay, let's see. Okay, it should be fine, I guess. Yeah, so definitely you need to add sprinkles before you close it up. That's the whole point. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to just repeat the same thing, kind of like wiggle it a little bit, just a little shifting. And you see like icing oozed out. So that's what you kind of want. You want to make sure that there is enough icing on there. I could find a paper towel. So this is your um, building gingerbread house, eh? Is that the recipe on your blog, this particular? Uh... I mean, essentially, you can do it with any, any gingerbread cookie or recipe. You just want uh, something sturdy that is not going to fall off when you thread a line through uh, through the opening there. Yeah. But if you're making cookies that people are going to eat, I suggest you wrap them and hang the string to hang them from the bag and not from the cookie. Right? If they're going to oh, eat them. Well, I would, oh, if they're going to eat it, yes. Yes. Then yes. If they're going to eat it, but nobody's going to eat these. I will not let anyone eat these. Okay. <laughs> but this is your build, just for to know, this is your building recipe, right? Is this your gingerbread yes, this is building recipe? Yes. So I'm going to try to, um, so I have, okay, so the design on the other end is, like I divided the cookie in half. Omar, yeah, are we doing the bake along tomorrow? Uh, we can on Instagram, or are are we not Should doing it? Along? Did you? I mean, I have plenty of willing uh, cookie eaters upstairs. The ginger cookies lasted about five seconds. Well, it's up to you, really. Um, Oh, here, oh my God. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow after um, yeah. well, you do the Correct. map because, I mean, since March. So, yeah. um, Olga's saying your idea would be good with a 2021 uh, cookie design that the zero could have the hole for the, you know, to put confetti inside the zero hole. Oh, well, yeah, it would be fun. Well, kind of, it, it reminds me of her idea of the glasses. You know, when we watch the New Year's, uh, uh, the ball drop there, everybody has glasses. And last year, the 2000 was the perfect glasses, right? There was a hole. Well, I think everybody's going to watch this year. Nobody can spend 2020, so. Well, everybody's certainly going to be home. So next on, no, it's Friday. Our next live is on Friday. And is it Friday we're doing the New Year's uh, kick in the butt uh, live? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so Friday we're working on uh, It's a Wrap Cookies. So we're going to tie a bow in, in 2020. If you guys want to join us. And if you're just arriving to this live, 
you can rewatch after. It'll be available on Dessert Network on both of our uh, YouTube pages. Well, let me see. I'm gonna do something with them. Uh, Ursula, not not no. You're missing a Friday. It's uh, Christmas is in two Fridays, so this Friday, this weekend, this Friday is not. Uh, it's almost Christmas, but not quite. Oh, it's in two Fridays. Well, it's not this Friday, but next Friday, yeah. Next next Friday, okay. It's coming fast. That's very nice. The feathering is always so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna. So fun, the shakers, eh? I have to, obviously, you have to let this dry. I mean, the only thing is it does take a little bit of drying time because you need um, the first layer to dry before you can turn it over and place your gelatin sheet. And ideally you wanna dry it like close to the fan or something so it dries quickly. And should I put sprinkles on the bottom or no? Or no, I think it's a, it'll be too many sprinkles. Too many sprinkles. All right. So here is my this one. So I added some sprinkles on the top, and you you really I mean you can play with play with it the way you want. You have you can have different shapes. Um, the cutters I got. Oh, I have. Oh, sorry. So I've got more shapes here. I don't have that star. I need that star. That star is so nice. So this is the another one I did. I really like this, um, like gold and champagne. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom, on the on on this side, and then I will. I will also have a tutorial on YouTube with the detailed steps on how to cut these out and what I, you know, I use a drinking straw to cut out the holes. And then once they dry, you can simply thread a um, like a pretty decorative ribbon through it, and yeah. You can hang them. They yeah. look really nice. So very nice hand. So I'm gonna turn it back to you. So let's see, do we have any questions? Here, let me are you going back to your chair? Yes, I'm going back to my chair. I think um Buster Buster is manning manning it over there. Hello Fabiola. Oh, and oh, by the way. Uh, Hello, okay. thank you, beautiful. Everybody's loving them. Those cutters are from uh, Home Goods. Home Goods, they're from last year though, so I don't know. So here is, oh, can you can you show one more time? What, your hands? Yes, so I wanted yeah. to show, like, um, here is another. So when I was thinking that the gelatin is not gonna work, so I ended up actually melting sugar and i just uh, placed the cookies on the parchment and then i poured melted sugar in you see how like i mean it's yellow but it's still very pretty the only thing about using um that's caramel right that's actually yeah, like that's right caramel, that's caramel so i found that when i when i put sprinkles on it like even though it's slightly it's becoming it's slightly sticky the sprinkles do help and I find maybe I wonder maybe they absorb some of the moisture like from the you know so it's not terrible because usually these will start to weep I find in several days unless well, you put them with would the you show that? no no it's somewhere in the box 68 as you can see no but I mean would you suggest shellacking them um, if you want to display them uh, for like a month or so, and if your house is maybe a little warm or something, yeah, I would definitely because if this drips on your on your carpet or your hardwood floor, I mean, it's not ideal to have caramel sitting there. Okay, um, so let's just clarify, Sensia uh, is asking uh, that is sugar that you boiled on the stove; it's not melted in the oven, right? No, 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 no. It's not actually, I made caramel. I do have a video. I thought that's what I was thinking that I had ready. Like I, I had some, oh, something else to do, so I wasn't able to prepare it. Um, I put sugar. I actually melted sugar. Um, I made caramel using a dry method. I didn't add any water to it. So I put the granulated sugar on the stove, and I let, like, a low heat slowly dissolve it. Okay. And watching it as it was caramelizing, depending on the pot you're using, 
um, you'll see that the caramel usually starts to get brown in the middle, so you want to bring in the sides. But when you, when using when making dry caramel, what can happen? You can end up having these large clumps of sugar. Uh huh. Do that carefully, and then I end up usually just like breaking them up with um, with my wooden spoon if there are any clumps. Mm -hmm. um, and then I put it in. It is very hot. I actually did burn myself. So you're pouring the hot, hot sugar right into the cookie. Yes, I did have them. I don't know why I did it because I always do that with isomalt, where I turn them like this and I pour the isomalt in. Mm -hmm. this way, I should have done it this way because yeah, this is this is the underside of the cookie. So um, it's fine. Like if I decorate the both sides, I don't think it matters. I really don't. But no. like, look, like it's, it's quite pretty. It is. So if you decide to do it this way, I would select them. I would use the PME glaze um, spray. Mm -hmm. Or you put the icing on, obviously. And that's going to that little layer, that mm -hmm. tiny little layer of uh, glaze is going to help to prevent this from weeping. Like it will, it shouldn't weep. I mean, at least not immediately. Because these, I think in a few days, they will start to weep. And I bet you uh, they'd be like uh, collecting uh, dust particles and stuff, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> cat hair. Cat, covered in cat hair. Okay. That's okay. And then I did this one. Like, I thought this was this was something, um, yeah, I like the, it reminds me of like a folk design for some reason, like with the hearts and like that. And um, these um, non paroles oh, I will have to tell you about these. So these are gold, and I use silver on this one. So these gold ones, mm -hmm. uh, in gold, these are edible, not like these. You know, these have like a really high um, metal shine yeah. to them. They're very, very shiny. I mean, they're beautiful. They're so, so beautiful. But I wouldn't necessarily eat these. Well, it's a noodle in the middle. They're built on a raw pasta. I'm just going to show you, like, this is one of the sparkly ones. Can I break it? Now I'm going to be like, oh, I can't break it. I, I'm like a weak link. Oh, here it is. So I broke it. So here it's a spaghetti. Yeah. It's an uncooked spaghetti. So I wouldn't recommend eating these. These are really for just decorative purposes. So they would work on these cookies because like nobody's going to eat them and they will look really pretty. But if you were looking for an edible art alternative, I love these. This is a silver, gold, and they also have actually pink, or I think they call it their champagne, which is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love these. Yeah. And, uh, all right. So I think I... Um, Exhausted my. Uh, Oops. Here, so I'm gonna just keep this here. Oops. Going going, so everybody thought it was beautiful, Han. Very thank nice. You, thank, you, thank you. I'm going to go back to the main screen. So. So I'm I'm going to show you a little preview of of mine. So here it is. This is my cookie gift. So this is a, a miniature. I wanted to show my hand so you could see how small it is. So let's quickly talk about the cutter. So the cutter is available at how sweet is that? As you can see, I uh, screenshotted that this morning, eight available. So if you want it, get over there. <laughs> She's, I don't think I'm gonna get more. Um, and then the other tool that's handy if you don't already own is one of these to kind of like get your shapes, should they warp at all? Even with the best recipe when you're building sometimes, you know, there's like a little bit of uh, roundness that's formed and you don't get a really snug building uh, for it. The other thing I'm using today is this. Um, often now we're seeing more and more the powdered food color, so I ordered it to try it. I'm using the red today. Uh, the powder is uh, rumored to not bleed because you've got like powder particles in the icing and not the gel. So it's supposedly better for bleeding if you have a lot of bleeding issues and getting your red super red. And here's the part. So let's look at the cookies. So here I got the, that design is by Fioco Cookies. 
I think her page, she might be Japanese. I, I'm not sure the Asian like lettering if, if it was Japanese, but it, and it's a little tough to navigate since I don't read Japanese. But if you go to her Instagram, you'll see she makes beautiful cookies. So she designed that mini gingerbread house. And then I added the base, that to plaque, and I decided to add the little gingerbread man. The tree didn't end up fitting. So I did make it, but it didn't end up fitting. So here, let me just add my hands. Let me switch. Where is it? This, this. So here are the parts, and you can see they are small. Let me go back to the comments after I show that. No questions yet. Hot cocoa bombs, they are the hit of the year. Everybody's making those. I see those everywhere. So, so um, you can see here that it's very, very red. I did film it just to show you guys quickly. So this is the, the powdered uh, food color. And I was putting it in with my boo-boo stick. And it took uh, five, I put five scoops of it in. And I didn't, you know, I was working on the project. I didn't make it in advance and it did cure quite a bit overnight. So it was much darker the next day. I shouldn't have added my last scoop, but you can see even before it was super Christmas red, it was still a nice red. It wasn't like, um, like uh, when you use uh, the puja, like the tulip red, it almost looks sickly, the red. It's, it doesn't have any kind of like punch to it. And you can see the colors very intense and like I said by the next day it was blood red I mean it was very very red oh there's there's uh, our friend Jeremy's here oh <laughs> hey, Jeremy. I don't know no no peasants here I, I'm the one that looks homeless Yes, the Master Elite. I didn't order the Master Elite. The the, the Americolor is affordable if you want to try. I found the Master Elite to be quite pricey. You see these are 350 It's a smaller size. But if you're not sure yet if you're going to like this stuff, it's, it's uh, I think, just an, enough. You tell you asking what is in the bottle that you are squirting into the icing with the food color. It was water. I was actually uh, making my icing flood. And so I was adding water to my thick icing. So it wasn't a secret ingredient. It was just water. And I, I use a bottle like that just so that I can kind of control the amount of water I'm putting in because the line is fast. You cross the line to too runny uh, very quickly. So I find that when you're using a bottle like that or some people use a spray bottle, it's easier. So the first thing I want to talk about, and if you saw in the video, I'm wearing a Band-Aid. I hurt myself using this contraption. Well, so did. I did, I, I hurt myself. So the thing about this particular project and these small builds, if there's a gap, it shows more I find than on a big house. And in this particular case, I need this to fit like really like a, a triangle at the angle. And so the edge is square. So I'm taking off basically the sharpness there and I want this to be angled. So you're just holding the cookie and running it on top of this thing here. And you're basically like planing or flattening the edge so that when you connect the two of them, you're getting a, just a much nicer fit, you see? And so then there's no gap there. And the same thing goes for all of them. You want to just run through them just to get the edge is really nice and flat. It's not a process that takes that long. It does make a bit of a mess. And if you don't wipe it off a little bit, the icing actually doesn't stick. It's like almost like dusting with flour, you know? So you wanna just like clean off your uh, cookie uh, sawdust. Maybe you could use it to make cookie moss, I don't know. When it says that in woodworking, we call that a meter. Oh yeah. Okay, whatever that. Marlon is pure glam. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Well, I'm just gonna you can see for yourself. So Marlon actually has she's been on a show. She's been on a show. I yeah, I have been yes, I have been asked many times. Uh it's yeah. 
Yeah, the, thing the, thing is is that the, the idea of it intimidates people. I think it's like the fear of looking of looking stupid, I guess. It's like the fear of, being, you know, you're really like making yourself very, very vulnerable when you go in a thing like that. But I figured it, you know, I'm uh, I'm going to be 49 in 2021. I figured at, at some point you just have to stop caring and start putting stuff on your bucket list or else what's the point? Thanks, Anne. Uh, that's why it took us only three years to start doing lives. <laughs> well, it is the, the thing is, yeah, being being creative and being out there, it does take a bit of um, courage, you know, because we do come across people that are not kind and um, it's not always fun. Yes. But, um, not always a positive experience, sadly, right? Yeah, yeah, but we no, we do love what we what we do, and um, so here is so let's see. So are so you going to the roof? Roof? so the roof I used uh, sanding sugar, and this product I got free years ago. I've never seen it again. It's black sanding sugar, but matte. I never saw it again. It was in a Halloween kit. And it, it's matte. It's matte. It doesn't have this kind of like sparkle to it. And I, I'm running low, as you can see. And I've loved it through the years for roof, like for the, you know, the look of like a tar roof type thing. And so now I'm using um, gray icing. You don't have to take your icing to jet black, especially if you're going to be putting black uh sanding sugar on it because it'll finish off intensifying the color the the sanding sugar so if you know you need to have like two colors or you want to have sanding sugar only on part of the design and you don't want to wait well you have to start with the sanding sugar element or else you're going to get sanding sugar everywhere and the black sanding sugar tends to get everywhere Looks like there's little bugs all over your work surface. <laughs> when you're adding sanding sugar, the other great thing is you don't have to worry about leveling. It hides all that. And now I, I don't have my bead tray. I'm just going to do it on a paper towel. If you don't have a bead tray, you can do it on a paper towel or on a folded piece of paper would probably work well or a coffee filter, and then you can kind of get your uh, sanding sugar back in the bottle. And there we have our sanding sugar coating, and it looks like a car roof-ish. Ish. I'm not yawning because it's boring. I'm tired. I, I didn't sleep much. You're so. bored, you're bored. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. I'm just like, like somebody's going to think like, you know, when somebody's young. Oh, I yeah. see there's, is there questions? Cherry says, I'm 59 and I feel I can make cookies. Just scared. I'm entering my next phase and I want to try. Oh, don't be scared. Well, no, there's no camera in your kitchen. So just make them. and. And, and just yeah. do it. There's nothing. What, what's it going to? It's, it's a. It. I mean, yeah, I would say. Wow. It's so now, open this up is, a whole new world for you. Yeah, well, we need a new world. We need some fun. Just just go for it. There's, It's not skydiving. It's no risk. So number nine piping tip here. So it's big. And now I'm just. This is thick icing. I want it to look like uh, fluffy snow. So I'm, I'm kind of having it kind of go over the black a little bit. And so I want this to look like um, snow accumulated on the edge, you know? Just like that. Nothing uh, super complicated. And this is great because you don't have to worry about it leveling, you see? And it looks super fluffy. So let's move here. So now the holes that you notice there, you see those holes? Well, those holes were done when the cookie was raw. You don't start drilling holes in your uh, hard cookies. And now you can see that joint. I've connected the two with nothing more than a string. So these are not glued together. They're just with a little uh, baker's twine. I've attached it and then I flipped it on the side and added a bit of snow here just because 
it's it's not horrible like this, but I personally find it's prettier with that. So people from the show, Maria is saying she saw the show. People, I heard a lot of people saying they just recognized my voice because most people didn't, didn't, right? I never really show myself in the tutorial, so it's my voice. All right, so now I'm adding just again with this thick icing, you can just quickly add just, it's just to look like snow, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So you're just hiding your edge. Yes, Jeremy, twine is edible. What? Twine is edible? I don't think it's toxic. Eat away, it's cotton. Technically, it's a plant. It will come out. Exactly. Oh, I, what is that? Can you use poppy seeds instead of um, like sugar for the roof? I guess so. I mean, it's making yeah, me think of an episode of the Seinfeld show when Elaine got tested and she was accused of taking drugs because she kept on eating poppy seed muffins. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. That's, I think that's like in your in Europe, the poppy seeds. We grew up on poppy seed rolls. Oh my goodness! I mean, if if, if that was the case, I was high uh, every weekend. You know, like you were high we, every weekend. Would eat, like, we would grind it in my grandmother's. Um, um pantry on the, she had like staircase up the up the uh, attic and we had to take turns like the old-fashioned cranking mechanism so did um, you have to get water from a well um yes i did uh, not not in my grandpa grandparents house but my parents where they had the garden we had a well well it's fantastic you have some uh, some objections miss no, uh, it's just it's just it's a lot of work is all. I like to turn on the tap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't, I was talking about grinding the, the poppy seeds. Uh, by the way, that is the only way you can really, really grind the poppy seeds. Even if you try to do it, uh, not that I want to lecture anyone, but I've tried. And um, you can buy that on Amazon. It's like $80 or something. It's very, oh, yeah. very expensive. Yes, it's very like heavy duty. It's fast iron. Um, yeah, okay, never mind. So yes, you can use poppy seeds, I think. You can use poppy seeds. I think it's a, it's a question of taste because not everybody likes the taste of poppy seeds. Yes, of course. But, but for decorating purposes, I think definitely. You can also... Um, but aren't, are they expensive? Uh, that's the question. If you, well, if you need to source out all the poppy seeds, go to a European store in the United States. Do not do not shop for them in a, in a grocery store. I remember when we arrived, like we would use like Seriously, like a pound of poppy seeds, grind it up. Uh, so I went to the grocery store and they sold them in small jars. And one little jar was like $5. And I was like, what? I need like 50 of those. So that's not going to happen. So I went to a Polish store or a Russian store and I bought like a one pound for $3 or something. Okay, well, and you want to store it in a in a fridge or a freezer because they will go rancid over time. Oil, okay. okay. So we have a... We have a what, do you, what were you putting? Yes. How far ahead can you make your cookies without freezing them? How do you store them in the meantime? Well, I, I try not to, what I do is I'll roll them and uh, freeze them so that when I bake them, they're frozen, okay? So roll, freeze, and leave them so that you can do one night. And then the following night you bake. And then once they're baked, you can put, let them cool and then you can stack them in. I, I have like big containers, like big airtight containers. I stack them in there. And so you want to do that maybe if you're working on the weekend, you want to do that maybe Thursday, Friday, so that you can decorate Saturday, Sunday. And then you'll probably have to um, wrap them up. Like, you know, if you're working on the Monday, get up before work early to wrap them so that they're all sealed and, and wrapped. So you need like a good four or five days, like you're gonna be doing production line type stuff. And if you're off during Christmas, you know, allocate a good four days. For this type of a project, there, the assembly, you need to wait. There's a lot of waiting for parts to dry so that you can actually handle them to assemble. So that's that's the, the thing. And don't worry, you know, people are worried that while the stuff is drying, the cookies are getting stale. They're not. This is the process. It, it's it's just the way that it is. Um, everybody's loving your Seinfeld reference. We actually watch Seinfeld again. Oh yeah, they haven't. It's funny they're not they're not on Netflix. 
Um, you know, when I sometimes look for Gilligan's Island, that's a blast from the past. I'd love to see all that was um, a Gilligan's Island. What are you all? What are y'all? Is that right? What are y'all using to make the twine halls? I personally use the drinking straw. Yeah, that's I, what I do. I what I do. I don't. I kind of twist it. Like I I yeah. put, I make the hole and I twist it. And with a twisting motion, I also pull it up. And then you blow in it and it goes out. And then you you know you repeat. In my case here, I coincidentally, over the years, every time you see something, I picked it up. I, I did have a tiny cookie cutter that was small enough to make that hole. So you want to make sure that once it's baked, that your hole hasn't melted away. So make sure while the cookies are warm, uh, get in there with some sort of a little uh, hard, like maybe a needle or something to open up the hole. So because if you have to do it when the cookie's cooled, it's going to be a little bit more difficult if to get that. If you have paper straws, you could, uh, you could use that. I have used, uh, you know, even after it bakes, uh, if it closes up a little bit, you can use a paper straw and quickly, like, make it. Make yeah. it. But remember to do that because once they harden, that's going to be difficult to do. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, a, bit, it's a bit harder. Back to poppy seeds. In Norway, it is inexpensive, and we use them on top of the dinner rolls. Yes. Um, so... I'm gonna have to move it along. I'm looking at the time. Okay, so listen, just a, a little spiel. If you're, I'm loading this tutorial actually in my cookie school group. If I don't get to everything, so on Montreal, Conf uh, Montreal Confections Cookie Schools on Facebook and also on Patreon. So I'm gonna have the whole step by step there. But she has only like two tutorials on there, as you you could saw you could see on uh you saw on um on the screen, right? You don't have a lot of tutorials there. You just have like that's videos. just Christmas. I mean, that's ten <laughs> years worth of videos. So yeah, she has like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tutorials. Yes. So this is a, a silver gray rainbow dust marker. Essentially, it is not visible to the, like if I bought it. To do it's like a, it's, it's advertised that silver, but it's gray it's and it's very like um, it's so light. But yeah. it's great for guidelines that only you want to be seen because if you come in with black markers adding guidelines on your cookies, you're essentially going to ruin it. So, so you see, you can come in and and add your guidelines, and it's barely like I see it. I can't. Yeah. You got, you can see, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see a little bit of the wetness of, of uh, yeah. you know, it's very, very, very faint. So, a couple of things I just want to mention now because I'm looking at the time. We're supposed to only go for an hour. So, this is a Wilton 44, and this is what I used for these beans here. And usually, we we see the pedal, a uh, pedal uh, piping tip, which is more narrow on one end than the other. And this particular one is really like uh even size you see so it makes a really nice stripe so you don't have to pipe several times with just a round piping tip i really like this one to do like santa's belt for example or uh, things like this you know when you're trying to add a line like a stripe what are you laughing at what was oh, funny <laughs> maybe maybe we should plan the life with that okay no bag explosions and I'm no bag. Everybody I'm, wants I'm them to known as well because so this is a one point five. Okay, so what is it? Or is this a one? I can never read anymore. The the piping tips, the number goes away. So when you're piping with a really small piping tip, you don't want to have rock hard icing. The detail um holds even if it's small, if you're not like kind of layering the icing. And so I'm squeezing a small dot of icing and then I pull away. And it creates like a bit of a tear shape. And this is all that I need to add my little garland here to the edge of the cookie. Let me bring this one back. I'm going to use my eyes on the, the writing on the tip. But this is, a, this is a PME tip, folks, right? Yeah. So PME tips, they are seamless piping tips. And what's great about them, um, they're more, it's not really great about them. They're more expensive. It's like five, six, maybe dollars a, a tip. But it is really worth it for details and writing and you know like small small things that you, you need to pipe because the icing is not gonna curl up and it yeah. just comes out really really nice out of the tip. 
and they do have them. They have double zero, zero, one. Um, a really popular is 1.5, which is, you know, between one and two, and it's like a really good size to have for so, adding details. So here, I'm gonna just show this is the front of the house. So since we're running low on time, I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm just quickly adding red icing. So this is the icing that I colored with that powder. I do recommend it. It, it made a beautiful red icing. I didn't try the black yet, but um, you know, it's not a crazy uh, price to try something new. Some of the products are so expensive in cake and cookie decorating. So this is gold icing. So gold colored icing, it, there's no metallic element. So I made the door, I was trying to think like what color, and then I added a little pearl for the doorknob. This is so small. So you have to look through your sprinkles to find size appropriate things. You don't want to put a giant sprinkle. And then I looked through my stuff and I found um, my um, small Valentine's Day sprinkles. And that's what I use to create the bow on the wreath so you'll see in a second i'm adding uh these little heart sprinkles point to point and they make a perfect little bow on the um, on the wreath oh yeah and these are this is a very finicky project but really pretty in the end and miniatures are so fun so you see there that and then i'm just this is like when you're pulling out the tweezers it's very finicky. Thank you, Anne. And then here, the other thing I want to show you is when you're making a gingerbread house, like normal, you're putting it together. Well, this side of the cookie here, so this is the back and this, you're coming in with this side. Well, this stays exposed. But I find that when you're working on such a small, small, small project, it's not nice. So what I did is I actually flipped it on the side. So this is the assembly process. So I'm just, and the thing that's great with these small projects, you're, it stands up pretty easy. Like it's not as tricky to get this to kind of hold together these um, small builds. So if you're a beginner, maybe start with a small house. You keep, so here, you're, I see you laughing. So you see, I'm hiding that front. Oh, really? oh, that is very clever. Look at her again, Jeremy. She again proves. <laughs> so I'm hiding that edge because I like that. It's too big. So here, I'll show you. I have it with a decorated um, red here. So here, I have the side done, and this is what it looks like. You see. And so I don't like this edge here. So that's why I did it that way. So for the actual house, are we, should I wrap it up? It's an hour at people. Do I continue? The, 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 um, and also said that you can make, and that's, that's, uh, I was actually thinking of that today. And I said that you can make hole if you don't have a drinking straw and you can also use a metal tip after the cookies are baked because you know you won't it won't melt your drinking straw which is probably plastic so you can also use a piping tip yes that's a good, yeah. good uh, suggestion thank you um well, if anybody watched me on the, on the christmas cookie challenge that's where i did use paper straws and bake them and they were perfectly fine in the oven if you want to yeah. do it yeah, and they yeah. after so did it dry all right with the powder color? Yeah, I mean, uh, like here you can actually see they're they're very nice. I mean, they dried perfectly. I, I I highly recommend it. I didn't taste it though. Somebody asked about the taste if it had that you know that really nasty kind of taste. Oh, so here is Jeremy says we should we should finish. I should finish. I'm here for yes. <laughs> you should finish. <laughs> it will come right to you. Does he say to stop or continue? I'm not sure. Keep going. Keep okay. going. All right. So let's just, we'll, we'll put together the house. So here, I'm not going to ice like I did in the video showing you guys because of time, but I'm just going to put it together. So here I've got my icing on both sides. 
of my little square. So the side pieces are square, so you don't have to worry about um, getting the cookie, you know, worrying about is it the right angle, like side, it's a square. So now I'm pressing that in, and then with the, am I in frame here? So I'm pressing that in. Excellent. So it was easier when I was icing the red because now, again, just to show you, you see this ugly oozing that's happening, which is unavoidable because when you squish pieces together, that's what happens. So you wanna try to get it off, ideally. And that's the other thing that I liked about icing the red sideways because it hides that and I don't have the ugliness. Normally I would pipe a bead there to hide it. So here's, you look through your cutters to see what you have to, um, to assemble on. Now, normally I would not recommend you pick this freshly assembled thing in your hand, okay? And I'm putting it more towards the back. And- It's the perfect size for the base. Pressing down so that this secures to the edge. Okay, and now I've got the same icing and I'm adding icing all around, which will hide the seam where the cookie connects to the base and it gives like the look of snow, right? Detail so, there, Jeremy. Can you guys even see here? Oh, so cute. And you can add, I added gumdrops to look like little trees there in the front. And it hides here, I'll show you on this one that's dry. You see the seam? It makes it like very tidy. Do I have any green of those candies? Let me look in here, actually. That's what I use. So let me fish out of this one. So there, I'm pressing my trees in. So you have your little trees. And then I had made these little, I had made a tree, but it didn't even fit in there because that's very small. I mean, you could fit maybe one chocolate, like, you know, those round lint. Maybe. I, was, I was just thinking about those. Yes, that will be the perfect fit. Or, you know, you could fit two of these guys type thing in there. There. And then you can pick up, is this the wet one? And then you just pick up the roof and you see the roof isn't glued. It's just sitting there. And so they can, they don't have to demolish the house to eat. They can just kind of lift it off. You could put a ring in there. Oh, yeah. You could put anything. I was thinking some people like to gift money. You, if you wrap it in a, a, oh, in a okay. little, you know, you could put a little. Oh, little okay. So put the money in. Yes. You could put a little bit of money in there. Oh, I know. We need to make like an edible piggy bank. That would be kind of gross. Imagine all the money and then you have to eat the cookie. So there you see. <laughs> that is so cute. I love the garland and the wreath. So pretty. It's so, so clever, uh, adorable, great idea, super cute. So that's it. Oh, I think I misunderstood what Jeremy said. I, th I thought he meant you for, for us to wrap it up, and he was, I think, saying that you, you should finish the house. I take that back. <laughs> I, I, did, I did, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> I was really concerned myself as well. But then she brought the other house in and you could see she had all the candy in there. <laughs> well, you can add whatever you want inside. You could add maybe a different type of cookie. You could add like little, maybe ginger snap cookies. Small gingerbread, cookies. Gingerbread, gingerbread man. I, I actually have a video coming up in uh, in an hour on YouTube and I got the gingerbread man. It's tiny, tiny, it's a open one. Where did you get yours? You know, people ask me sometimes where I got a cookie cutter. You know, when you've been collecting for as long as we have, I, I don't remember at all. And I this is not me trying not to answer the question. I really don't. Um, I got it a long time ago. And, you know, when sometimes people mail me things, I, I have no idea where I got it. It's uh, it's from oh, my... Yes, yes. And the thing that's fun is that you can eat the, the house more easily, I think. Thank you, Jenny. I don't all, all, always, but I mean, honestly, the sprinkles, they're all the, the, the 
they're rave, like people are going crazy with the sprinkles. Personally, I don't like the taste of sprinkles. I much prefer to eat candy. The sprinkles are aesthetic, but not tasty. So I'd rather That's eat more candy. Uh, the Jimmy's are not bad. They're fine, but I mean, if I have to choose between eating Jimmy's or eating nerds, I'll eat nerds. You're not gonna like, you know, like eat the Jimmy's like out of the container? Well, you know what? The candy companies should come out with uh, cake decorating sized candy, you know, so that it's actually tasty. Don't you think? Whatever you say, darling. How do I switch this up? Okay. There you go. See, right, no, this, is, uh, this is. I agree. They taste like. Yeah, no, I know. I do agree. I obviously, yeah, I'm just um, a kidding. But this is a comment of the day. Yay! Thank you, Angelina. So I just want to show here. I have something. Just one more last thing to show, just for the gift wrapping part of it. So bags. There's all kinds of bags. So this is a gusset bag. So this bag has a flat bottom. It's hard to see here. Let me go with this camera just to show quickly. If you're shopping for bags to wrap your stuff uh, in. So this is called a gusset bag. So you want to measure the bottom of your thing that you're wrapping and then shop on Amazon or wherever. And, and you'll find that the measurements for the bottom of the bag are there. And so when you have your dimensional thing, well, it'll fit much nicer in the bag. You see the bag stands up. Whereas a cookie bag is flat like that. So really this is not going to work to put a 3D house like I made. You need to get something like this, which will allow, like this will would be perfect for the house because the top kind of, you know, gets triangular and then you could put a nice ribbon on it. But the bag, it's kind of essential when you're making these types of things to factor the packaging in. So, so think about your package. Maybe cookies about two inches tall, the house you made? Um, I'm not sure. No, it's taller than two inches. Here, let me see my, do I have a ruler? Mine are quite tall. I'd say it's three. It's probably three inches. Three inches. With the, with the roof? Yeah. I'll get a ruler talk, can I? These are five inches. It smells so good. So I can't wait to hang these. It's gonna be so cute. Here, this is my favorite ruler. So yeah, it's three inches. There. This three inches, so mine is, uh, yeah, this is ruler. So. So three inches, so it's okay, let's see. Yeah, it's super tiny. It's just the right size, I think, right? Well, I think as a gift. Yeah, yeah because you can you can really make like a lot, you know, a lot of them in no time. Um, I don't know about that. Maybe you can put names on them? Well, what do you mean? I mean, just, they're uh, small, but they're not fast. This is yeah, not- They're not fast, but I mean, you can uh, like, uh, do the roof all at once, do the sides all at once, and then the candles like. I guess. You know what you save on is don't put the wreaths and don't put the garland and don't put the trees and don't put it's you know, all the little details is what takes a long time. The, the, the little the little detail details yes. I think that makes the house, no? Huh? Marilyn is a genius and candy companies are fools. <laughs> <laughs> What is the name of, yes, the, the best gusset bags. I'm dating myself here, but every time someone says the roof, my brain says. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I guess we're of the same generation. So the flat bottom bag is a gusset bag. Gusses. That's it. I will never remember that. <clears throat> gusset bags. And they're, you know, uh, all kinds of sizes. You can get them quite large and it just, and make sure you get a clear. Don't get, uh, if, you're, if you're taking the time to make decorated cookies, do not get stuff printed on the bag. It hides all your work that you did. So don't, don't uh, get those bags. I don't recommend it. It just kind of takes away from all your hard work. It's great for, it's great for like when you, bake the you know undecorated cookies it's fantastic but if you, you know, 
for decorated cookies. Let it shine, you know. Exactly. And we'll, we'll, we'll exactly. be able to see them through the clear poly bag, and it will look so nice. Anyway, it's time to wrap it up, guys. We will be back on Friday with another fun episode on how we are going to end this wonderful 2020. Well, we have one more though after, so it's not the last live. Okay, we have, okay, we have one more after. Are we? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, okay, so it's not the last one of this year, so it's um, one. The one before <laughs> the last. So on the last one. And Amber should be, if nothing, it should be with us for those two last ones, hopefully, fingers crossed. So if you want to rewatch the live, it is available on the Dessert Network page. So if you could please follow us there, we'd appreciate it. We're trying to grow our following there. We need 10,000 followers on Dessert Network. And you can rewatch it there. Thank you so much. What we, are, what? we are not going to have 45 more minutes. Well, we I were would love to shed. I have a class to prepare for, so I'm going to have to go. But uh, we will again see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.